Hello friends, I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. My dear friend, Dr. Ming Wang joins us today. And Dr. Ming Wang is one of the brightest guys in the world. And I'm telling you, anybody that can graduate at the top of their class at Harvard is one of the smartest people on the planet. Dr. Ming Wang, it is so good to see you again, my dear friend. Thank you for joining me today. Great to see you again, Kerry. You know, most people don't know your story. You've been on the program, but it's been seven or eight years ago. Tell us about how you immigrated from China to America and the circumstances you grew up in as a child in China and what caused you to come to America and, and, and all of the resources you had when you got here. Thank you again, Kerry, for me to be on your show again. Um, you know, I take care of people with vision problems every day and you might be able to get it from my tie. <laughs> um, you know who appreciates sight the most are those who used to be blind. And people who appreciate freedom the most, the freedom that we have here in America, uh, tends to be those folks who used to not have freedom. And I'm one of those who used to not have freedom. And I appreciate what we have in America, freedom and liberty so much. Um, I grew up in China during the Cultural Revolution from 1966 to 76, where the government shut down all universities and colleges of entire China for the 10 years and forcefully deported every single high school graduate to some of the poorest part of the country and condemned each one of us a life sentence of hard labor and poverty. Mm. So in 1974, I was 14 years old. I finished my ninth grade, and the government wanted to deport me to labor camp just like 20 million others. It turned out one of the only ways to avoid being sent away to labor camp was to have a music talent. So I played the Chinese violin that you interviewed me before and learned to dance. Because if we could do this, you might be to get into what they called government song and dance propaganda troupe, therefore being allowed to stay in the cities. Then government discovered I was learning to play music instrument, learning how to dance with an ulterior motive, really not for music or dancing per se, but to avoid being sent away to a labor camp, so they stopped my music and dancing practice. Uh, so it's interesting, these days, here in America, sometimes friends say, oh, it's so nice, you have a hobby, you can play instrument, you can dance, it must be nice to have these hobbies. And I tell them that I didn't learn these as hobbies, I learned it to survive. So then, 1976, the Cultural Revolution ended. There was a chance to go back to school, and my parents told me that you got to jump three years ahead. Because 1974, I finished my ninth grade. So for three years, I was out of school. Now, I got the chance to get back to school, and I said, I, I, should I just continue, you know, go back to 10th, 11th, 12th? My parents said, no, jump straight to 12th. I said, why? They said, we have no idea. Government could change their mind again shut down college again for the next 10 years. So I had to work really hard, but I was very lucky. My parents were very helpful, very supportive. And um, they got all review questions and copy by hand every night and made me study like 15, 16 hours a day. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I finally, uh, but I knew there was slim chance of hope for freedom and I wanted to do my best. I did get into college, but um, in 1982, I got the chance, I uh, met a visiting American professor who lent me $50, so 1982. He l gave you $50? Yes. And that's the 50 you brought to yes. America? Oh yes. my goodness. I was dropped at National Airport, Washington, D.C. With that $50, with a Chinese English dictionary, knowing no one in this country could hardly speak English. But even though I was poor when I came back, I was happy because I had the freedom. Yeah, so how in the world, I mean, you land here in D.C. with $50. How did you survive before you, you know, got on your feet? I was very hungry when I arrived. Uh -huh. And in, as in the film, Sight, which is based on my autobiography, which uh, uh, will be released probably next year, the film, showed I, when I arrived, I was so hungry, I got four Big Macs in McDonald's, <laughs> I almost killed myself. <laughs> and then uh, I arrived in three-piece suit because my parents spent two months of their salary, b bought me uh, their suit. They said, you are going to America, you got to dress nicely. Then I, I arrived in America with that three-piece suit with few books, that was it. 
then I saw lots of people in, on university campuses, they were laughing at me because I was too formal. Everybody was very casual, you know, t-shirts and sandals. So that I had $10 left. So I said, I got to dress like American. How do you could dress Ameri like American with only $10? Salvation Army. <laughs> so I got into Salvation Army. And you know, quarter, you can buy a shirt, a used shirt. I came out of it. I said, I dress like American it's now. But I got more laughed this time by students on campus because I dressed like Americans all right, but I dressed in the clothes that people used to wear in the 1960s. Yeah. <laughs> so belt bottom <laughs> pants and so that, that's what, that was how I started. Yeah, you know, and I, I had a thought. You said when you landed here you had $50 and you were starving and it's good that there wasn't inflation like today. You bought four, <laughs> Bif Ma four Big Macs a that's day. Right. Those four Big Macs might cost you $50. That's right, exactly. <laughs> And um, I had the uh, opportunity now in America to, to learn, to study, and I appreciate so much because I didn't have that opportunity before um, back in China during Cultural Revolution. So people say, oh, why are you studying so hard? Why are you studying hard? I would say that if you have the op experience of once having not the opportunity, that you would appreciate and you will work hard as well. And that's what I am always tell students that this is the greatest country. We don't have a perfect country. We've got our problems, you know, many challenges. But it's the greatest country. They say, why you say that? What's the proof? I say, I'll give you a proof. We have immigration problem. That everybody from around the world wants to try to come here. Why? Because America offers something that every human being desires. Freedom, sense of fairness, uh, law. And uh, America's founded fondness to bedrocks, Constitution and the Bible. Amen. And we should always remember that. And I want to, you know, talk in a minute about how you came to know the Lord. Uh, you know, but I remember watching God's Not Dead and your care, your, you know, part of your life was portrayed in that movie. Tell us a little bit about that. Dr. Rice Brooks wrote a book, uh, My Pastor, God's Not Dead, and uh, which uh, they depicted the lives of several atheists who came to the Lord, and I was one of those people in the book. Then the book turned into a movie, and um, then uh, one day, uh, Dr. Rice Books that texted me an image from California. He was with the film studio. He said, hey, man, we got this guy to play you. And I looked at the picture, and I replied to Dr. Rice Books. I said, at least he's better looking. <laughs> <laughs> so they recruited this young guy uh, to play me, and th that was part of my life story which is in a film site now. In God's Not Dead, the student, the Chinese student, came from China, survived Cultural Revolution, which is my story, and uh, finally got a chance to study science. And uh, I did not want to, I was not interested in anything else except science, because I never got a chance to study in the past. And I was an atheist, I did not believe in God. And as depicted in the movie, that there was this debate between the student and professor about uh, does God really exist and what are the evidence that's supporting God's existence. And uh, I gone through that process uh, during my own life, and uh, which is depicted in the film. Uh, I met a professor um, during medical school at Harvard in Boston, and uh, I kept on asking him questions about these because I realized that many things, I was studying human eyes, I was trying to become an eye doctor, and I realized that eyes are so complicated, it's not possible that it can form randomly, you know, by, based on atheist belief. And uh, I realized that science could not explain some of the fundamental questions about human existence and many phenomena in the world. So professor then sensed that I had this, uh, I was in crisis, I couldn't explain things based on science alone. He took me out to lunch and he said, what's across the street? I said, there's a car. He said, what's the difference between a car and a human brain? I said, human brain is more complicated. And he said, can you imagine how a random piece of metal assemble itself into a car? I said, no way. Then he leaned over, he said, how about human brain? So right then, then this professor opened a window in my life. I realized that, that the reason that human eye formed there for the function of vision, and with so many different parts, and form so orderly for such a beautiful function for vision is because it did not form out of randomness. It was formed with a purpose for vision. 
design. There's a designer behind it. Yes. So I realized then, life is not just about science. Life, life is about science and Christian faith come together. Mm -hmm. And these two, science and faith, can work together. So I started my journey being a Christian then. So, so you were an atheist, but when you saw that there was no way that evolution could, right. you know, do these majestic things like mm -hmm. produce an eye or a car even, you became a Christian. Yes. And that's, that's basically the, your, your story over the last how many years? Since the early 80s? Yes, 1982. I came to America 40 years ago. It has been a tremendous journey of um, learning to learn how to restore sight, um, but also my own sight, uh, spiritual sight, uh, was restored that I, through study of science, through open my heart to not just science, but also Christian faith, realized that life is about science and faith together. They can work together. And many students in the universities today don't realize that. They're studying science and technology. They think they do not need Christ anymore. What I've learned is science gives you the tools. But in my life experience is that Christian faith, a faith in Christ, gives you a purpose. Amen. What, what are you going to use the tools for? For. Yes. Yeah, amen. Dr. Wang, we've got to go to a quick commercial. Friends, stick around for this important message, and we'll be back with Dr. Ming Wang in just a moment. Folks, there's an old song that says, Come unto me, I will give you rest. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times I need rest. And there's a rest that is perfect. And Jesus tells us in his word, Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Maybe you don't know how to come unto him, but it's really easy because he's always there. He's always waiting. He always cares. It's not hard. You just talk to him. You just tell him, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I need you. You are my Lord. I receive you into my heart. I believe you died for me and rose again. And I thank you with all of my being. Please, let me be your child. And he will do that because he is there ready and waiting. And he wants all people to come to him. Will you do that? Just confess and believe. And you will receive his love, his peace, and his rest. And when you do that, will you please let us know? We'd love to celebrate with you and receive you as a family member and God. And call us or contact us at the number on the screen, 615-415-0504, or email kwfar at gmail.com. God bless you. Okay, friends, we're back with Dr. Ming Wang. Dr. Ming Wang, a, a lot of people don't realize, but you invented something that is just amazing for the eye. Tell us what it was that you invented. I wanted to help people who, after trauma, to restore their sight. And uh, med uh, medical doctors realized for a long time that the reason that people are blinded after trauma is often due to the scar their body form during the healing process. But how do you stop the scar from forming? Uh, forming? And then we realized that a fetus without, uh, you know, before birth can actually have this regenerative ability to heal without scar. But then the problem became that how do you start fetal research, doing fetal research to study how the fetus can heal without scar to benefit adult trauma patients and without abortion. Yes, without hurting the life. Yeah. And I started research right as about the time that I became a Christian. And I really want to study because I saw so many patients 
who after trauma lost sight because of scarring. So I want to find a way to prevent the scar, but I knew the, f the fetus, unborn child, has the answer, but I was a Christian already and I did not want to hurt the baby. So is it possible to conduct fetal research without hurting the baby? You know how it is that sometimes, uh, you know, there are people think that it's so polarized today, people, right? And that they think, oh, it's not possible. Science and faith, uh, God doesn't want these things to work together. There's no way to advance science without compromising our faith principles. And fortunately, I didn't give up that search. You know, the Bible, James 1, 4 said, perseverance complete you. I said, you know, God must have a way to allow science to move forward to improve the quality of lives without hurting a life. And I didn't give up. I kept on my research on the scar, and I want to do fetal research without hurting the baby. And I persisted for 20 years, and eventually um, came up with this piece of tissue, placenta. You know, placenta is the sac that each baby is in before birth. Then after um, the child is born, the placenta is always... Uh, discarded. Yeah, yeah, discarded. So I said, maybe, could it be the secret of scarless feeling of fetus lies in the placenta, the membrane. So I got the placenta donated to me by mothers after giving birth to a child. They, they were going to discard the placenta anyway, so I got this bloody placenta in the pants. I brought to the back to, in the laboratory and processed them, washed them, and really peeled this very thin membrane, the amniotic membrane that used to surround the baby. Amniotic. Yeah, amniotic membrane. And so I thought, is it possible the amniotic membrane has that secret? Of allow the baby to heal without scar. And uh, so I invented the amniotic membrane contact lens. A contact lens yes. out of discarded tissue. Yes. And then I put this amniotic placenta contact lenses onto patients after injury uh, to temporarily recreate a fetus-like environment on top of the eye right after injury for two weeks and make, encourage the body to regenerate again just like we all used to do before we were born. Amazing. And then two weeks later, you remove the amniotic contact lenses. Instead of seeing a scarred eye, which is blind, you see a clear vision eye. Wow. So it's a... And you, I've seen videos. Is it Maria, the one yes. that was blind that yes. you operated on and, and gave her her vision? Yes. Tell that story real quick. And then there was a um, orphan brought from Moldova. Uh, we had a Sci Foundation to help blind orphan children around the world. And she was born blind. She didn't have, she may have a little bit sight when she was very young. She was 15 when she was brought here. And we used the amnia technology. And um, every doctor around the world has given up on her. She would never be able to see. And she had never essentially see herself. When with God's blessed with this amnia contact lens, we restore her sight. And she saw herself for the first time in her life. And uh, we give her a mirror. And she says, I'm beautiful. Yes, I've seen in, the video, in, yeah. In, in, in Romania, the, the lang her native language. And so amniotic membrane contact lens uh, now has been used by tens of thousands of eye doctors throughout the world in nearly every nation. And millions of patients have their eyesight restored. But it's a, such a powerful example to show that not only the scientific achievement that benefit so many patients, but also, and more importantly, it's a validation that shows that science and faith can work together. In fact, science needs the guidance of our faith in Christ to properly conduct the science. You know, God loves us. He wants us to improve the quality of lives. And the quality of lives is improved through medical research. But he wants us to do it in the right way. That's amazing, Dr. Wang. And I want to talk about your new film in a minute. But, and I also know that your office is at 1801 West End Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee, because I've been there. My wife was one of your patients, yes. and we've known you for years. Uh, but if somebody wanted to connect with you, how would they connect with you? Uh, it's just drmingwang.com, D-R-M-I-N-G-W-A-N-G. So now tell us about the new film that's coming out early next year about your life, what it's called, what it's about, and how people can see it. I summarizing my life experience, which shows that God wants science and faith to work together. Um, for eight years ago, I wrote a book my autobiography, From Darkness to Sight. Not and just how the, can someone find that book? Um, just drmingwang.com. Okay. You can see it. So it shows not only the journey of my, many of our foundation, blind orphan children from darkness to sight, like Maria, but also my own journey 
that these patients, their lives change, have made me see um, in a uh, seek of Christ. You know, uh, understanding about life itself is about science and faith. So after the book, uh, my autobiography from Darkness to Sight was uh, written up, and I was approached by a studio um, and, uh, in Hollywood, and they said, we would like to make into the film. So that started the journey of making into the film. And uh, we recruit actors like Greg Kinnear. He uh, stars in it, yeah. Yes, and many others. Terry Chang. Um, oh, they want to find uh, uh, actors who did a worldwide search of Asian American actors, three, that kid, teenager, and uh, adult me. And they approach me and say, I mean, we're going to have to recruit some Asian American actors to play you. What are your criteria since your, it's your story? I said, two criteria. They say, what? I said, number one, good looking. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, number two, young. And they say, why? I say, you know, it's a biopic film. It has to be truthful, right? <laughs> yeah. So they recruit three actors, play me. And um, that film uh, was shot in, Van in Vancouver, Canada, over a year and a half ago. And the message of the film, which is called Sight, based on my autobiography from Darkness to Sight, from Cultural Revolution in China, came to America for freedom. And it is in America that I was able to find Christ and realize that science and faith really should work together, you know. And the, the purpose of the book and the film Sight is to inspire especially young people. They're studying university, in universities and technology and science. And sometimes they think, I just need this technology and science. I don't need the Christ, you know. And the, the book and the movie shows that, yes, you can be a good engineer if you have the science and study hard, but you can be a better one if you also know Christ, because it gives you not just the tools, but the purpose. So what's the purpose in my life that Christ has given me is to use these medical technologies to help people who truly need the most help, which are the blind orphan children that yeah. the film site was depicting. So the film has finished shooting. Uh, it's not been publicly released yet. The message is about freedom and faith. Yeah, and friends, I want you to listen to what Dr. Ming Wang said, Zing you being an engineer. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, an Indian chief, whatever the case may be, but he said you have a better life with Jesus Christ. Isn't that what you said, Doc? You have yes. a better life with Jesus Christ. And your life has been enriched because you gave your life to Jesus Christ when you learned about Him. Yes, and the movie Sight in particular is telling uh, people, you know, many students in America, they grew up with freedom, just that like people if they always have has sight, they may not appreciate as much. And that's the problem in our society. You know, many young people may not appreciate what they have. But if they got a, uh, a chance to learn the story and the feel and pain of suffering of immigrants, refugees, who, you know, put their lives on the line so they can get to the other side. But what's on the other side? It's an opportunity to live in America. So I hopefully that will impact people, especially young people in America. Um, so the film site is essentially, it's like the telling a story of someone who used to be blind to share with all the sighted folks today in America how precious sight is. The, free, the film f uh, site is about someone who used to not have freedom to share with all the people in America today who always had freedom how precious yeah. Freedom is. I once was blind, but now I see. Yes. Isn't that precious? Dr. Ming Wang, I, I want to tell you, what an honor, what a privilege to have you on the show again Thank and you. to share your story. Uh, and friends, I want you to know when the film Sight, S-I-G-H-T, comes out, I want you to go to a theater and see it. And if you uh, would like to connect with Dr. Ming Wang, it's drmingwang.com. Go there and buy his books. You'll be amazed. Dr. Ming Wang, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for joining me on In Your Corner today. Thank you, Carrie.